Hi, everyone. Welcome to my special seminar. So the topic today would be probing dark matter MIDI charge and reheating cosmology with intensity and energy searches. <clears throat> my name is Yudai Tsai. And today I will be talking about using neutrino experiments and collider forward regime, sometimes coupled with dedicated experiments like Formosa to study intensity and energy searches. And let's go to the full screen and I will close, uh, reduce this window. Yes. Okay, so there are many strong probes of dark uh, particle physics, including the energy frontier. We want to build larger collider to search for string theory, gradient unification theory, supersymmetry, these very interesting fundamental topics in the high energy theory. And we have achieved significant, significant milestone of finding uh, Higgs boson and understand most of the standard model. And that's excellent achievement. Also to understand standard model, but in the low coupling regime. So this is the first is the mass direction. There is also the coupling strength direction. So opposite to the strong coupling, you can go to the very weak coupling. And then there is neutrino that we have already found, which is part of the center model, but it's very weakly interacting. We also have found gravity and the understood general relativity and gravitational wave. And we're gaining better and better understanding of gravitational wave with space, uh, space mission, quantum sensor, and all of these uh, precision techniques. So the next big topic would be dark matter. So we want to understand dark matter as part of this I call elusive universe, including neutrinos, uh, gravity, and dark matter. So we try to understand it with this intensity and precision probe. So in my colloquium, I'll talk about the precision probe. Here, I focus on the intensity experiments. And not only we want to find and understand the elusive universe, we also would like to have a better connection to the high energy theory. So as a high energy theorist, you want to have a better connection of the elusive universe to the particle theories that are very interesting, including string theory, gradientification theory, and supersymmetry. And that will actually be one of the goals today of today's talk. And of course, it would be also great to resolve anomaly and connect to cosmology. So, for the dark matter part, let's focus more a little bit on dark matter. We have understood so much about dark matter gravitational interaction in all the different sizes. Galactic rotation curve, bullet cluster, large scale structure, CMB, all of these have indicated the dark matter gravitational interactions. So the question one can ask is, is there any observed evidences of dark matter interaction beyond gravity? And how can we develop new probes to study them, right? This is a key thing for us to go beyond just gravity and understand the particle nature of dark matter, which we know next to nothing about, except the strong, uh, all kinds of strong observation, like uh, strong in the sense that a solid observation of dark matter by gravitational interactions. And furthermore, we want to further explore the early universe cosmology by developing new probes of the reheating cosmology. <clears throat> so reheating is a crucial phase after the inflation that the inflaton decay to standard model particle to populate the universe. Because after the inflation, the universe is very cold and empty. So how do we reheat the universe to a situation that uh, then you can evolve into something that human can leave. This is actually a crucial step for cosmology. So we want to explore the early universe cosmology 
and we want to develop new probes of reheating cosmology by considering particle physics. So not only we can ask what particle cosmology can do for particle physics, we also ask what particle physics can do for cosmology. And just like neutrino, merely charged particle provides an excellent probe to the reheating cos uh, to the early universe cosmology, and specifically merely charge can be used as a probe for reheating. Which bring me to the merely charge window to dark matter property and reheating cosmology. This is the very focused topic of today. <clears throat> okay, so the outline is very simple. We will introduce mini charge particle and dark matter. And then we'll talk about the reheating cosmology probe. And then finally, I will discuss phenomenological and experimental studies, including neutrino experiments, Formosa, and other dedicated experimental searches. And I will connect to neutrino, lonely particles, and also hoping to explain anomalies. And here are the theoretical motivations. So mini charge particle is a particle chi with mass and electric charge. Uh, so the charge would be small in this talk, and small doesn't have to be very small. Even one fifth, one fourth would be good. Uh, will be also be considered. And this is related to the long standing question of is electric charge quantized to what unit and why? And these long standing questions has inspired the rock quantization, grain application theory, so on and so forth. So there's many theoretical reasons to study them. Conservatively, one can treat mini charge particle as a test to see if quark electric charge is the minimal charge. And string theory really predicts fractionally charged particle. Uh, so Witten, actually you can find a YouTube video of Witten saying that uh, fractionally charged particle, unconfined one, the free one, are the strong prediction from string theory and one of the best signature for string theory. And that is because string theory compatify higher dimension into low dimension you have non-trivial topology, larger winding number, and large winding number corresponds to large magnetic uh, monopole. And large magnetic monopole by the direct quantization give you small electric charge. So you want to find fractionally charged particle. Today, we'll focus on the third one, dark sector theory and cosmological implications of mini charged particle. But the first two, are significantly important. <clears throat> okay, and if you have any question, please email me. I will uh, give you more detail about these uh, topics. There are two kinds of mini charge particle. One is the pure one. One is the kinetic mixing one. So the pure one is not very favored by many theorists. But to me, it's a strong test. If you can find it, you can actually test a lot of the uh, theories. So the pure mini charge particle, meaning you insert a small hypercharge of this particle in the UV. And it's actually incompatible with some of the God's model and have interesting implication of string theory. As I just talked about, you can get fractionally charged, small charge from string theory. So it has huge theoretical impacts. And if you find really this kind of pure mini charge particle, then you can actually falsify some version of uh, gut theory. On the other hand, theories also like more motivated type of model. So they consider this effective mini charge particle from some higher from some higher order theory, uh, higher energy theory from gut theory, for example, that effectively you can generate this mini charge. So you don't have a small charge sitting there. It has a theoretical origin. That's also very interesting, but it's a different kind of motivation from the pure mini charge particle. So in this second case, you have a dark photon that is massless, that is help generating this mini charge particle, but afterward it decoupled from standard model. And I will uh, tell you how to get that and there is a strong origin with the from the grain unification models. 
So one can kind of help falsify gut model. One is completely uh, compatible and can even be originated from gratification theory model. So either one are extremely interesting. In a low energy, it's hard to distinguish them because they have the same low energy effective Lagrangian, but cosmologically, they are very different. So today, our method can be one way to distinguish them, but we'll focus on probing the reheating cosmology. And these also have signature in almost all accelerator experiments. So this kind of effective Lagrangian is perfect for, um, for uh, all accelerator search. So it's an excellent target for accelerator experiments. Okay, so what is kinetic mixing media charge particle? The idea is very simple. You have U1 hypercharge uh, that is coupled to chi particle. And then you also have a standard model U1 hypercharge. So this, sorry, the U1, this is an additional gauge U1 particle and you have a standard model U1, they're coupled through this heavy fermion loop. And you can integrate out this heavy particle, consider the effective theory. In the low energy, you have this kappa term. This kappa term is called kinetic mixing because it's mixing the B particle from our standard model uh, sector to the additional gauge theory. And then you can do a field redefinition into a more convenient basis of volumesless particle. And then that's how we arrive at this effective Lagrangian. And now you have to combine kappa and this E, kappa and E is combined together into this epsilon prime E. And then the B prime will actually decouple from standard model particle. So B prime doesn't talk to standard model directly, but it still talk to chi. And that's how you get the effective media charge particle. So if you have, again, if you have a question, please email me. And uh, then once you go through electroweak symmetry breaking, the midi charge particle now pick up a small electric charge. It also have a small coupling to Z. So you can also study Z decay to probe the midi charge particle, right? So this is the standard electroweak symmetry breaking. Muang and Tao, all of them also go to similar processes and have similar uh, have the same like fraction of these two uh, couplings. But of course, now we have a small number, so the charge becomes very small number. And it's excellent target again for all the accelerator, many accelerator experiments. Okay. So now we understand uh, a lot of these theoretical connections. So it's very exciting. How about dark matter? It turns out the mini charge particle is an excellent uh, window to the dark matter for the following reason. So EDGES is an experiment to measure the CMB absorption spectrum from the reionization age. There is a lot of complicated physics I will neglect right now, but basically reionization re is there's a stage of the universe that the stars are forming. When the stars are forming, the first star actually will ionize, um, will ionize this hydrogen. So then they can eventually have this interesting temperature that can absorb this uh, 21 centimeter uh, light. And this absorption is predicted with this gray curve, but edges measures a much deeper absorption spectrum, actually significantly deeper. So this has been puzzling. It's a puzzling observation. Some would call it anomaly, and some say it may be a difficult background subtraction, so it's still under heavy debates. But the point is that there will be many, many future upcoming 21 centimeter absorption spectral measurement coming out online, and you can use all of them to probe this regime. 
And it's a difficult measurement, but it's very exciting to have access to the absorption uh, for the reionization in this redshift. So again, it's early universe, but it's not as early as reheating, it's in the radiation dominated universe. After the radiation dominated universe, there will be a matter uh, domination, and then this is the uh, uh, when the stars are forming. So there will be upcoming Sci-Hi, Saras, and many other experiments that are important for this regime. What I want to say that is that this deepened absorption spectrum actually provides one of the only hints for dark matter interaction beyond gravity. So this tells us if a little bit dark matter is merely charged. So here, the y-axis is the fraction of the charge, the small charge. The x-axis is the mass of the merely charged particle. So in this regime, 10 to the minus 2 GeV to 100 GeV, so this is the golden regime, 10 to the minus 2 GeV to 100 GeV, you'll see this regime again and again in my talk. And 10 to the minus 4 uh, epsilon to 1 epsilon, again, is a golden regime that I will see again and again in my talk. This will be the window to mini charge dark matter. So mini charge window provide mini charge provide this window to dark matter that can affect the absorption spectrum. And we also provide many different experiments and phenol search for this regime, which I'll further elaborate later in my talk. More importantly, um, I also want to say that. I'm not saying that we need dark matter to be these uh have electromagnetic property to explain edges anomaly. Quite the contrary, the I would flip the argument, flip the logic. I would say there's a lot of upcoming and existing experiment to probe this cosmology. And this cosmology is highly sensitive to dark matter electromagnetic property. So we should carefully study the dark matter electromagnetic property in order to understand this cosmology because it has significant effect on this cosmology. So uh, the, this logic is much more interesting that you study any of the dark matter electromagnetic property in order to make proper prediction for the future cosmological measurement in this region. Okay, so that's the first part of the kind of interesting introduction. And we understand now that mini charge particle provides really a great window to very high energy UV theory and the late universe kind of dark matter uh, observation. Late meaning uh, currently observed. So how can we connect it to a little bit earlier universe in the reheating phase? Let's get into it. So reheating again, <clears throat> reheating again is this phase after the inflation, the inflatons are decaying to the standard model radiation. And the standard model radiation then populate the universe and make the universe become radiation dominate. And then we'll have a later evolution of the universe. So this is after the Big Bang. Reheating temperature, however, we don't know what it is. We don't know what temperature does the standard model reheat to. And there's a huge range of potential reheating temperature, ranging from very high energy, the like inflation scale, to down to the BBN, Big Bang Nuclear Synthesis, 5 MeV. So for this huge range, uh, it's very hard to make sure what's the actual reheat temperature. So we really need to um, find a new probe of this reheat temperature because we actually have no idea what the universe is actually reheating to. So uh, so that's why we have the, so what's the reheating? So reheating, uh, forget about this chi for now, reheating basically just means the phi particle is decaying to standard model particle. But then irreducibly, this standard model particle will annihilate into chi particle, which is our mini charge particle. So that's why I call it cosmic mini charge background. And here we consider a pure mini charge particle and chi does not specifically couple to phi because we want the irreducible, the minimal, minimal production of chi in this theory. 
So we turn off the coupling from phi to chi. So this will be the minimal constraint in some sense. So we'll talk about the minimal constraint for this chi particle thermally produced from the standard model bed in this process. And then this reheating temperature comes in because whatever reheating temperature reheats the standard model bed, that's how the standard model uh, radiation start to evolve, so it will also determine the chi particle abundance. Now, mini charge particle can be easily overproduced to be more than the dark matter abundance, which is rho dark matter divided by critical uh, dark matter abundance. This gives you the number of 0 0.12, which is the interesting number that we will consider to. And then you can consider the constraint. So here the y-axis is the fraction of the charge. Now we extend to much smaller charge. So you know, we, uh, if you remember, we were considering 10 to the minus four to one, but now it goes to 10 to, all the way to the 10 to the minus 13. And the x-axis is the mass of the middle charge particle. In between, you find out in between these curves, this uh, regime, for this charge, the midi charge is overproduced. They will overclose the universe. Overclose meaning you have too much dark matter, the universe will be, uh, there's too much gravitational bound for the current universe to form properly. And the right hand side is the evolution of each of these parameter points that we choose for different charge for one GeV dark matter. And here, we also specify a um, kind of the, um, we also specify the, the temperature, reheating temperature to be one TeV for a calculation, but the result will be the same for the reheat temperature to be much larger than a hundred GeV. Because for, the uh, reheat temperature for much larger than 100 GeV, these results will be the same for, uh, uh, will be this, because it's much larger than this mass range, so it will not really affect any of the story here. And this is the current cosmi uh, cosmic evolution. So this will be the most complicated side, uh, slide. So let me, pause for a few seconds so to see if people have questions so let me pause for a few seconds. okay so let's continue so um this will have different kind of uh reheating there will be have different kind of uh reheating i would say not reheating, different kind of cosmic evolution of the radic abundance for the B and C and D. So A, B, C, D, E are different uh, choice of uh, charge. So for the B and C and D, these are will give you the over density. And for A and uh, E, it will give you under density. So B and C and D will give you over density and A and E will give you under density. And uh, you can also see that for this regime, this follows the like uh, thermal relic. Uh, so, so this uh, gray curve is for the standard model radiation. You will follow this standard model radiation. Okay. So, also for the, but now if you consider lower reheat temperature, then you will find out that it's much. The, this regime shrinks because when you have a lower reheat temperature, you cannot produce the higher mass uh, milli charge particle. So this will give you different kind of B and C and D, which is give you different kind of uh, over density that, that is in this uh, parameter chosen to be 50 MeV. And then uh, this region shrinks. So the constraint also shrinks. And again, this is a cosmic evolution compared to the dotted curve, which is the currently observed 
uh, currently observed uh, dark matter density. Okay, so combine these, we find out that we can have irreducible production of the cosmic mini charge background. Uh, but depending on the reheating temperature. So depends on different reheating temperature, as you can see from this plot. As you can see from these slides, that ranging from 5 MeV to more than 100 GeV, you have different color curve that corresponding to this temperature, and it corresponds to different constraint with different temperature. So just like what we talked about previously, we can set the reheat temperature to be very high. Uh, this the, the as long as it's larger than hundred GeV, it will be, uh, it will be much. It will be. As long as it's more than hundred GeV, it will be more than. Actually, I cannot see the. Okay. Sorry, let me change these slides. Hmm. So <clears throat> you can see that when you go to very high temperature, it's this uh, large uh, large constraint regime. When you go to really small temperature, the constraint regime shrink. So you can reinterpret this as constraint for different temperature. But I think a more interesting interpretation is to say this is actually a probe of reheating temperature because if you find a midi if you find a midi charge particle in this regime, for example, this star regime then you can actually set the upper limit on the reheat temperature to be smaller than 100 MeV. <clears throat> this will be very significant for the milli charge particle, uh, for the reheat temperature, because again, we have no control. We have very little probe of the reheating cosmology. And finally, we talked about the pure midi charge particle. How about the kinetic mixing midi charge particle? For the kinetic mixing midi charge particle, the story is a little bit different. So now you can annihilate into the uh, massless B prime. And uh, so this is very interesting because now you don't have the over density to close the universe. You don't have the dark matter over density production. But now you have some effect on the uh, relic degree of neutrino degree, uh, relic degree of freedom, rel relativistic degree of freedom that affects the expansion rate. And it's defined as delta ineffective. Ineffective is the effective number of neutrino species. And now, because you have massless particle, you will also affect the expansion rate, just like how you affect the uh, expansion rate with neutrino. Uh, because the B prime is massless, so it's very light. And currently, Planck is constraining the delta unaffected to be smaller than 0 0.3. And in the future, it will be constraining to 0 0.06. And it corresponds to uh, 1 GeV and lower. Uh, so you can, again, have this constraint depending on the reheat temperature. So now, again, the constraint can be de depending on the reheat temperature. And so again, you can search for this regime and this will give you a constraint on the reheat temperature of 100 MeV. So if you find a milli charge particle here, you can say the reheat temperature has to be smaller than 100 MeV. Okay, so put these two plots side by side. What we learned is that you can study these uh, reheat temperature in both scenarios. On the pure mini charge particle, you can probe all the way up to 100 MeV and above, uh, but mostly to 100 MeV for this accelerator search. So I will talk about this accelerator search later. And for the uh, kinetic mixing mini charge particle, you can probe up to 1 GeV. For kinetic mixing mini charge particle, if you want to further probe uh, the regime to the right, then you need to wait for the CMBS4, then this regime will expand to the right. And we discussed the reason for that in our paper. The reason for that in our paper. We discussed the reason for that in our paper. Now here's the further outline of the talk. 
I will further talk about the, so now we have understood the dark matter, uh, the mini charge window to high energy theory, to reheating cosmology, and to the dark matter. The rest of the talk will be just the interesting accelerator, uh, phenol and experimental searches, including both scattering and scintillation studies. And uh, take a few second break for questions. <clears throat> okay, we can continue. So there will be two kinds of search methods, including scattering and scintillation. Uh, so for uh, scattering, these will be with electrons and uh, the energy exchange set by the detector threshold will be, uh, let's say, around MeV level. And the exchange will be set by the detector threshold because there's all kinds of these neutrino experiment that based on their technology, they have different detector thresholds. Uh, and the, so you will study the high electron scattering, which is given by this cross section. So it's actually proportional to the inverse of the recoil energy threshold and the recoil energy threshold is actually the uh, determined again by the neutrino detect uh, by the detector threshold. So you can ask why is it important? The reason why this is important is because the cross section actually is proportional to what over the detector threshold. So the, la the larger your detector, the smaller your detector threshold is, the better. That's because the chi is exchanging ultra light. A uh, photon particle with electron. Yes, so this is an important feature for all the neutrino searches. Okay, so uh, let's continue. So let me share. Yes, so let's continue. So there will be these. Um, let's see how to reduce this window. Okay, so there will be this. Oh, okay, there's two kinds of search, as I say. There will be the scattering and scintillation. So let's start with scattering. Um, there are different kind of scattering search you can cons consider. You can consider accelerator production and consider the electron scattering neutrino signature that I just mentioned. You can also have cosmic ray production that you have cosmic ray hitting the midi charge particle. This midi charge particle fly into the large detector like super K, hyper K, and you can study the electron scattering signatures. And uh, one of the key example is in the Fermi at the Fermi lab in this new Mi beam, which we calculate the neutrino product, the midi charge production. And you can produce this mini charge particle that can fly into the argon cube two by two, which is the prototype of the Dunier detector, which has already been built. And uh, UC Irvine is in charge of the analysis. So part of the will, will, so we will actually analyze the mini charge particle signature in these uh, upcoming experiments, which is already is already been built and will take data soon. Actually, uh, it will take data very soon during this uh, bin time. And here we produce the midi charge particle through the fixed target collision producing meson. Meson then go through decay and you can consider different meson will have different flux uh, prediction for the chi particle decay, for the chi particle production. And here you can see why it's high intensity because the proton on target is six to 10 to the 12, 20 proton on target. So there's a lot of midi charge particle that can be produced because you have a lot of proton on target. And here is the sensitivity. So I plot different kinds of sensitivity corresponding to different production channel. This is the analysis we did in back in 2018. And again, the chi -E scattering have this cross-section enhancement in the low energy because you're exchanging a massless uh, photon. And 
This mini bull star is actually a very interesting dedicated dark matter run for the mini bull, which has thick target and no electromagnetic horn focusing of the charge meson. So you have less neutrino background, so you can study mini charge particle better. And through these studies and the follow-up study, we real realized for liquid argon, 30 MeV to 1 GeV could be a good range to set the limit for a single hit. Uh, signature for electron. But you can also do double hit and trace it back to a target to reduce the background and go to lower threshold. Okay, and here is the plan. I will study a proper mini charge analysis uh, with micro boom people. So I'm not in charge of that, but I'm helping as a theoretical support. And uh, we'll also develop coalescent plan to study neutrino electromagnetic property. For some of them, for example, neutrino dipole, you can use it to distinguish Dirac and Majorana neutrino properties. And uh, you can also uh, study neutrino mini charge from the beyond standard model model and standard model prediction of the charge radius. That's actually extremely interesting because we're not far away from measuring it. I'm also in a Doom collaboration to study cosmogenic axion-like particles. And secondly, you can study scintillation searches. So now we finish the scattering, we can study the EV level energy exchange from this energy deposition. So we'll get into the detail of that. But before that, I just want to say that I'm involved in almost all, actually all the dedicated scintillation experiment in the next three years. So I'm involved in all of them. I'm part of the Medican collaboration. Of course, uh, currently they're doing a lot of the uh, data taking and I will join the data taking, I will join the analysis once all these uh, trips are over and they are really actively taking data to 2026. And there is submet and the lens MQ uh, being installed or fully approved at the J Park and the Los Alamos National Lab. But today I will focus on Formosa at Atlas and because the demonstrator will be completed in February 2024. So I will focus on this one. Okay, so the scintillation detector, you have the dedicated search that is EV level energy exchange for the scintillation developed by the mini chem people. Uh, so they're, they're looked for, so we can look for this 20 nanosecond window scintillation uh, in order to, to reduce the background from the PMT. So you have low scintillator bar coupled to the PMT and this uh, PMT to collect the light from the scintillation is kind of inverse to a lightsaber because lightsaber, you have this thing that generates your lightsaber, but here is reverse. You have a photon coming in to <laughs> scintillate your scintillation bar and you use the PMT to collect the photo electron. So, but still it's basically uh, a lightsaber inverse one and you can study a mini charge particle. So the new way to study is, is to remove this detector to the forward regime or, or build a new one. And here there's much more flux of mini charge particle, actually 10 to the three to 10 to the four enhancement just from transfers to the forward regime. And this is also a perfect regime to study dark matter, mini charge and neutrino. And again, and also you don't have to limit to Large Hadron Collider. You can do it in many other lepton collider as well. So there's a lot of huge development in this direction. And here again, I will not get into too much detail, but PP uh, collision can produce a lot of meson and consequently mini charge particle. So we were installing this Formosa detector, basically a scintillation detector in the forward regime to have a great sensitivity for mini charge particle, which is 480 meter downstream of the Atlas interaction point. And this will be completed by February 14 because the tunnel will shut down afterward. Okay, so here's some projection and plane. So you can see that Formosa really can dominate this uh, 
10 MeV to 100 GeV regime, this window for the dark matter and reheating cosmology. So again, all of these tie back to this very exciting window for theory, dark matter, and reheating. And this is an exciting time to study this mini charged particle with all these kind of different probes. And I'm involved in, uh, yeah, okay. I'm involved in many of these probes, LSND, mini boon, um, submet, super K, Fermini, Formosa. And so if you're interested, we can chat about all of them. And this is tied back to the mini charge window, as I mentioned, exactly in this window. And we also add the flare uh, uh, probe recently because flare is a liquid argon neutrino experiment in the four regime pr proposed. And they can, the, it, can, it can also have a mini charge sensitivity to probe this interesting green window for mini charge particle. And why is this so interesting is because, so this is some detail of the flare. Uh, I just share it quickly here. Uh, actually for the interest of time, let me just skip it because I already discussed the physics involved. So we set a uh, threshold from 30 MeV to one GeV to cut down the neutrino background and also cut down lower background, but you can also do a double heat signature. Okay. And, uh, so here is the side-by-side -side completion. So the left-hand side is pure, it's just to study mini charged particle. The right-hand side is to study mini charged dark matter. So this really tells us two important factor fact about the accelerator probe. In the accelerator probe, it doesn't care about the earth and atmospheric uh, stopping. Because here on the right-hand side, you can see there is a direct detection limit. So above this limit, Traditional direct detection experiment cannot see the mini charge particle because this mini charge particle will be stuck, uh, slow down enough before they reach the detector, so you don't have enough energy deposition. Now, recently, people in Stanford developed the ion trap to study mini charge particle. That is actually very interesting, and it ha can have implication on this regime. But if you use accelerator, you can do the same thing without worrying the stopping. So, and it's also independent of the assumption of the dark matter abundance. So these two strong uh, probe, one doesn't care about the dark matter assumption and two doesn't get stuck in the earth and crust are two significant strengths of the accelerator search. And also it provides a new window to the reheating cosmology and you can really probe the reheating for 10 to 100 MeV in this very interesting regime enclosed by two green curves. And again, on the, for the pure mini charge particle, you can probe to very high reheat temperature. Uh, not very, uh, you can probe to very high reheat temperature. For the, for the uh, kinetic mixing one, currently you can only probe to one GeV. But in the future, once you have CMBS4, then you can continue to probe to the right. And it's a very exciting time to use accelerator to probe this region. And we're not the only one who study mini charge particle. There is huge interest in the slow mass process that there's endorsing of all of this mini charge uh, particle study activity. And Formosa is featured as one of the experiment to be competed under this S day program that uh, we can uh, further uh, compete for this uh, S day program in, uh, in the funding uh, application for the full Formosa construction. And you can extend the study to many of these portal particles that is including the kinetic mixing, Higgs portal and neutrino portal. They can explain dark matter radic abundance solving anomaly like muon G9-2, charge pro proton charge radius. Uh, also, um, yeah, proton charge radius. And also develop low cost uh, experiments like long quest to study the decays of these portals. Uh, that this is, I will talk about in the, in the next slides. And uh, also neutrino portals to uh, 
midi pool access um previously there are some explanation of the uh Zenon signature and so there's many and also you can try to connect to the neutrino mass and dark matter so this long quest is a search for this long leaf particle in this scintillation uh, or in the like this kind of uh, EM cal. So you can put this EM cal here to search for the long leaf particle in the spin quest set. So spin quest is a nuclear experiment. So you can repurpose it to search for the long leaf particle. I will not get into detail, but this is again a proposal they will submit to the LDRD. Okay, and there are some uh, searches, and I will I sh I share the slides that if you're interested you can look at them. So finally, here is a summary. We have the, now the strong probes of the elusive universe with precision and intensity frontier that we have already found neutrino gravity, and the next big thing is to fully understand dark matter and neutrino. And we also established strong connection to the uh, theory and to dark matter cinema model uh, interactions beyond gravity through this neutrino through this mini charge window. And we'll further explore the early universe reheating cosmology. Here's our look. We'll further study the elusive universe at the intensity, energy, and cosmic frontiers. Mini charge particle can help test UV theories and further answer deep questions in cosmology and dark matter observations. There are so many dedicated experimental search and a general purpose search for mini charge particle. And I haven't even mentioned the quantum devices that can study them, but there are many. So we should study the mini charge particle very carefully and also study neutrino renormalizable portal and axions in coalescent efforts. Finally, let's motivate us with Frederick Ryan, who found um, free neutrinos to detect free neutrino through nuclear reactor and open up a new window to the elusive universe. And we'll continue to open new window to explore the mini charge dark sector and unveil the deep theories, uh, deep mystery of the universe. Thank you. Thank you very much for listening.